Hi folks. Tonight I'm going to read Elegy Before Death by Edna St. Vincent Millay, which comes from her 1921 volume, 2nd April. So let's get started. Elegy Before Death by Edna St. Vincent Millay. There will be rose and rhododendron when you are dead and underground. Still will be heard from white syringas, heavy with bees, a sunny sound. Still will the tamaracks be raining after the rain has ceased, and still will there be robins in the stubble, brown sheep upon the warm green hill. Spring will not ail nor autumn falter, nothing will know that you were gone, saving alone some sullen plowland none but yourself sets foot upon. Saving the mayweed and the pigweed, nothing will know that you are dead. These, and perhaps a useless wagon, standing beside some tumbled shed. Oh, there will pass with your great passing, little of beauty, not your own. Only the light from common water. Only the grace from simple stone. All right. So that was Elegy Before Death from the 2nd April. One of the most interesting aspects of this poem, I think at least, is in its title, An Elegy Before Death. So the dictionary definition of an elegy is a poem of serious reflection, typically a lament for the dead, implying that the usual subject of an elegy is dead. So here Malay is elegizing somebody not yet dead, which is somewhat remarkable. Of course, that begs the question, who? One of the mysteries of Malay's work is that her poems often seem to be addressing a particular person, but with rare exceptions, we usually can't figure out who. With no other information to go on, I would have guessed her mother, because Malay and her mother were very close, uh, and Malay wrote about her quite a bit. But the phrase, sullen plowland, none but yourself sets foot upon, doesn't seem to fit with that interpretation. Her mother was a nurse, and as far as I know, didn't have much to do with plowland. Uh, Malay didn't grow up knowing her father very well either. Uh, he left when she was very young, uh, and it's doubtful she'd have enough uh, to know about him to really write an elegy. Uh, so ultimately, no strong leads there. That said, this poem is rich with botanical references, too, so let's take a look at those. So you may have wondered what type of flower syringas are. I did, too, because I hadn't heard of them, and I know about a lot of flowers. Um, apparently, syringa is the genus that lilacs belong to, including syringa vulgaris, the common lilac, which is originally native to the Balkans, but is now found in gardens all over the world. Um, I'm guessing she chose to use syringas instead of lilacs to maintain the meter of the work. Uh, don't ask me what the meter is, because I cannot remember what all of the different meters are. Uh, all of the other flowers mentioned in that first stanza are domestic garden flowers as well. Roses, rhododendrons, so it all sort of fits. She also mentions tamarack, uh, and that is Larix laricina. It's a type of larch, uh, which is, larches are a unique type of conifer tree. Uh, they're notable for the fact that their needles turn brown in fall, or rain if you prefer, uh, from the tree, rather than being evergreen, like most conifers. As for mayweed, there are so many plants that go by the common name of mayweed that it's hard to really be sure what she's talking about here. But to generalize, all of them are chamomile-like plants in either the genus Matricaria or Enthemis. Uh, I'm imagining a particular plant I've seen before that has frilly leaves like chamomile, but that grows in the cracks and sidewalks and other sort of wasteland areas. Um, and it has a flower that smells almost like apples. But that's just a guess based on what I know of sort of common weeds of New England. Pigweed is often used to refer to members of the amaranthus genus, but I actually think it's more likely here she's referring to Chenopodium album. Uh, that's a garden weed that's more commonly known by the name lamb's quarters. So yeah, a lot of flowers there, but not a lot of clue as to who the poem's talking about. On that note, uh, I will leave you for the evening. I hope you have a good one. Good night.